welcome to Super Tutor TV. My name is Brooke, and today we're going to be talking about vocabulary. And in particular, we're going to talk about mnemonics, which are the best way to learn vocabulary. Mnemonics is a weird word, it's spelled funny. And what mnemonics are is they're essentially memory tricks. So why do we need mnemonics? I have so many students and they are very overwhelmed by all the vocabulary that they have to learn. And mnemonics, what they can do is they can help you learn words more quickly. That means you can study less, play video games more, or do whatever it is that you do when you don't do homework. Within the world of mnemonics, there's several principles that can help you. One of them is to try to find pieces of a word that are either based on roots or that are related to other words that you know that can trigger your memory to come up with some sort of bigger story than just a one word definition or the word itself. Take, for example, the word truculent. Uh, the word truculent means violent or aggressive. Uh, you might not know this word. So if you don't know this word, what you can do is you can kind of look at the word and say, okay, I know those first four letters, T-R-U-C. That sounds like truck, right? And then maybe you can think of monster truck rallies. If you've ever watched television and seen those commercials during daytime TV for monster truck rally, right? And you've got these trucks and they're really big and mean looking and they might be like, you know, painted like a T-Rex and they're giants and they attack things like other trucks. So I encourage you to come up with sort of crazy visual images, take apart the word, use a little piece of it as a clue for yourself to create a story and a bigger piece of information that your brain can remember. One of the reasons that mnemonics work is that they are basically like a keychain. If you don't have a keychain on your key, it's even easier to lose your key. Heck, I lose my keys all the time and I even have a keychain. But when I don't have a keychain, it is near impossible, right? Say you throw your house key in your backpack with all your books and all your stuff, it can be really difficult to find that key. But if you put it on a big fuzzy keychain with a bunch of other keys and it makes a lot of noise, it's going to be a lot easier to find it. In that same way, when we insert information into our brains, we want to insert it along with other information so that it doesn't get lost. And so when we insert more information around that one piece of information, we're creating a cluster of information that's going to be a lot easier for our brains to remember. Now, not all words are that convenient in terms of using mnemonics. Sometimes a word really isn't going to be anything long enough to even pick very much out. So like vex, for example, means to annoy. Um, <sighs> And this word, it's kind of tough because there's nothing in vex that sounds like annoyed. It's such a short word, it's really hard to even think of something. So I think of T-Rex kind of rhymes with vex. And then Jar Jar Binks, I think of, when I think of annoying, Jar Jar Binks is really annoying. And he looks kind of like a, like a lame futuristic dinosaur. So if you can get from vex rhymes with T-Rex and, and Jar Jar Binks looks kind of like a T-Rex, or maybe you can think of a T-Rex hanging out with Jar Jar. You can come up with things that are sort of random or out there. Anything that, whatever that word triggers for you, just use what it triggers for you and figure something out. So it doesn't really matter whether it's a silly story that you made up that's visual or whether it's coming from the etymology or the root or the context of where the word came from. But either way, you're depositing more information in your brain so you can acquire that information more quickly and more readily. Yeah. The other reason that mnemonics can work really well is that oftentimes mnemonics are visual. All of our systems of memory are not created alike. Our strongest memories are our visual memory and our spatial memory. Let me give you a little bit of an example of this. I want you to think of a friend that you hang out with. And if I dropped you off at that friend's front door, could you find their kitchen? Most of my students are able to say yes to this question, but if I ask that student, what was the last sentence word for word that you said to that friend when you were leaving? And most of my students have no idea what that last sentence was. That's because we understand spatial environments much more quickly and easily than we do word information. So if we can engage our visual memory or our spatial memory, if we can come up with some creative, ridiculous image that will be hard for our minds to put aside, it's going to be a lot easier to learn a word. Um, there's actually a TED talk on this by a guy named Josh Foyer. Josh actually accidentally won the National Memory Championship in New York City. Kind of an amazing feat. What Josh talks about is memory palaces. This is a concept that dates back to the ancient Greeks. I also encourage you to check out that TED Talk. I'll put the link in the comment section below if you want to check it out. If you want more help with mnemonics, there are a lot of resources on the web. There's a mnemonic dictionary. There are people on Twitter who post a mnemonic of the day. And if you just Google the word that you're trying to memorize and the word mnemonic together, you're going to be able to probably find some mnemonics to help you memorize if you're not very good at coming up with these on your own. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up 
subscribe to our channel. We're gonna have lots more awesome videos to help you in your quest to be college ready. And please go check out supertutortv.com. We have a blog there with even more information and you can subscribe to our mailing list to find out more about the exciting things going on at Super Tutor TV. I hope to see you next time. This is Brooke signing off. Like us on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. And until then, sayonara, ciao, hasta la vista, goodbye.